Everybody, welcome to the Real Estate Jam session. Uh, I've got a really incredible interview today. Uh, Didra, Didra, Didra or Didra? How do you say it? Didra? Didra. Didra. Good Lord, I'm, I'm struggling. Um, Didra Woolard, uh, she's with the Motley Fool. I guess it's Million Acre Podcast with the Motley Fool, correct? Uh, Millionacres.com. It's, uh, it's a real estate investing arm of the Motley Fool. Okay. Um, I reached out to her because she put an article together on a topic that is kind of near and dear to my heart. I grew up on a farm in Nebraska, and I'm seeing all these billionaires, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, uh, Michael Burry, Ted Turner, all buying farmland, ranch land. And I was, I want to find out why. Why are these people buying all this land? Are they trying to control water rights? Um, are they just want to grow vegetables? <laughs> what, what are we doing here? So uh, Dieter is kind enough to come on and talk to us today. So thank you for taking the time to do this today. Um, all right. Why are they doing this? Why are they investing? Is it that great of an investment opportunity? Are they trying to control water? Um, what, do you, what do you think it is? It is a good investment opportunity in that it's a really stable investment. And it's also a great way to diversify if you're Bill Gates and you have a lot of Microsoft, you know, putting, putting money into farmland is a great way to kind of be more diversified. I think that's something that his money manager has looked at. Land, you know, they're not making any more land. This, it really has value over time. It holds its value. And as you mentioned, there are concerns with water rights. There's concerns with food supply. All of that makes land a good future hedge. I agree. You know, when reading your article, it really piqued my interest. So I started doing a little bit of research. But if you look at the, uh, and I put some notes together. So uh, if you look at by 2050, they're guessing that the global population is going to expand by 70%. Global water demand by 2050 is going to be, we're going to need additional 20 to 30%. Most of that we've going to agriculture as well. So this could be a great place to be investing. I mean, with this population growth like this, we're going to need a lot more food. And, you know, it's going to be, a, I just see that, Farmland, ranch land is going to be going up in value from from here on out. So uh, this was an I originally thought this was just controlling the food chain, controlling water rights. But now that I dug into this, I think it's going to be a great investment. Would you agree? Absolutely. And another thing to keep in mind, too, is that the age of the American farmer is just getting older and older. So what you're seeing also is a gradual uh, gradual move away from all of those small mom and pop farms. I mean, when you look at the long tail trends here, you look at like who owned land 100 years ago, you've seen just this right. massive amount of consolidation. And a lot of times older farmers, the, the kids have moved on, they've gone to the city, they don't, they don't want to be farmers. Although you also have a movement of some millennials actually wanting to be farmers. So there's a little bit that way, but it's more that, you know, uh, older people are, are giving up their land too. Yeah. I mean, it's, I grew up on a, <laughs> I grew up in a town of 280 people in Nebraska, actually 281, uh, Wallback, Nebraska, small town. It was all small farmers. We all had, you know, I think we were around 365 acres, uh, wheat, corn, oats, had some, ran a small herd of cattle, uh, had a small feedlot. I mean, we ran th probably 30 to 50 head of fat cattle, um, chickens, a few ducks. But, you know, those small farmers, you'd see them every few miles. That doesn't really exist anymore. You know, you're seeing a lot of, you know, a lot of those those homesteads have been taken out. The homes homes have been removed. Now that's all farmland or ranch land. But you know, some very few of those family members stayed and are actually farming that. But the ones that have the equipment is massive, and you know, it, it's the technology that's coming in, in with farming. The ag tech is it's pretty amazing too. So. Uh, I do see that this could, you know, buying farm and ranch land, I see it being a solid investment. I mean, now I was looking at, and this was something that shocked me, 0.5% of farms are institutionally owned. I would assume it was a lot higher than that. I mean, driving around the, the countryside in Nebraska, it looks, I guess it's, 
I found that number to be shockingly low. So uh, what kind of numbers are you seeing? Are you seeing about that same number? Yeah, that, that does sound a little low, but uh, it still is relatively decentralized, even though, you know, we always talk about big farms coming in. It's still, it's still decentralized, but it's getting, you know, it's, it's getting more consolidated. And what you mentioned about ag tech is really important too, because it's so vast. It's everything from, from drones that are monitoring the fields. It's, you know, engineering different types of pickers. They have now, uh, there's been a lot of funding lately uh, for mechanical pickers that use machine learning that they can pick pick a tomato or, or, or grapes or something without crushing it. The machines have learned the right amount of pressure, the right amount of touch, and they and the and the uh, the cameras can determine if something's ripe or not. So we're at the you know, we're just at the beginning of something really big that's going to happen in terms of farming, and that will help get the maximum value out of the land, especially when we're looking at things like like climate change and, and water issues. Yeah, you're going to have to have, figure out how to distribute, get water out further. Um, one thing that it was very interesting was talking to a farmer in Nebraska. He said his problem is finding employees that can um, really help run the equipment because everything is so tech related now. And he goes, it's really hard. They're bringing people in from other countries that have been educated. I guess maybe other countries are a little further ahead with some of their agriculture than we are here in the United States, but they're bringing in people and they're, they're because they have to know how to run this equipment and the tech that goes with it. And so that was interesting. And so, and then also, they're making cab free tractors where you're going to be able to sit in your house or actually I'm sure they're doing it for all the equipment, not just tractors and run your equipment from your computer. And so I see a lot of tech that is, there's, it's incredible what's coming. And, um, you know, it, it's really, you know, I think it would be great to be in the forefront of that. And so how do I invest in that? I mean, I know they, you know, to go out and buy a few acres of land, it's pretty expensive now. Um, but I do see it going up over the next several years significantly. Um, what are you seeing out there? Are there real estate investment trusts designed for this? Crowdfunding, I know, is something that you know about for farmland. What, what are your, what's your advice on investing with farmland? How to get involved? Yeah, the easiest way to get started is absolutely with real estate investment trusts. There are two main ones. There's Gladstone, which is ticker land, L-A-N-D, and then there's Farmland Partners, which is ticker FPI. Those are both great ways to get a little slice of this. There's also, like you mentioned, farmland crowdfunding. Um, a couple of the sites that that I know of are Acre Trader and um, Farm Together. And what they do, the way that works is that you essentially, you become part of a project. Uh, a lot of them are permanent crops. So things like almond trees, uh, apple orchards, things like that. And you invest and you get a share and then you get a share of both the crops as they come in, as well as the uh, overall land appreciation. Because when you're talking about farmland, you have those kind of two income streams, right? You have, you have the crops and then you also have land appreciation over time. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's the way, it, the way I grew up or, around Nebraska, the way where I was raised, it was, you could rent the land and there was a couple ways you could do it. You could either just rent the land at a, a flat rate or, um, and this is in, income producing land, where it usually is corn, oat, wheat, some commodity. Um, you could either have a lower rate on the rental rate and then a percentage of what you got for selling the crop. So there's a lot of ways that you can really structure it. Um, I've not been involved with the, the crowdfunding. Are the crowdfunding, do they focus on um, cropland or do they focus on <clears throat> ranch land? Uh, a lot of it has been cropland. So it's, it's orchards, things like that. Okay. All right. It'd be interesting. I'll have to check into that because that's pretty interesting. Because going out and buying, you know, 100 acres, you're talking about a few hundred thousand dollars at this point. It'd be my guess in nice areas. Um, as far as now, have you invested in any of these that you know of, or you've just done your research on them? 
Uh, I've done my research on them for uh, the, the crowdfunding. These are for accredited investors, so you have yeah. so you have to meet certain income requirements for those. I don't believe and, there's a regulation a crowdfunding for farmland yet. Okay. All right. Um, but I do think, you know, in the long term, as far as investing in farmland, you are looking at a very viable investment here. And I do think you can get pretty creative with a farming community. Um, you know, you can go out and just kind of pick your, you know, how you want to lease the farm farmland out to a uh, farmer. Um, do make you sure you do your research and make sure this farmer is an experienced farmer. It's just like any investment. You know, people have got to understand that, you know, I got to make sure I've got an experienced farmer that is going to raise a crop that's going to yield results. And so, you know, as our viewers are out there taking a look at farmland, um, you know, I think it's something that they just really need to make sure that they do their due diligence, understand the cycle of the farming, the farm and understand the way that the product is taking the market. So uh, there's a lot of homework here, but now tell me a little bit about your podcast. How often do you do it? How do we find you? Uh, so yeah, you can find my writing on millionacres.com. I do the Million Acres podcast uh, once a week, one episode, if you're interested in farming. Uh, I did one with uh, about ag tech. I did another one with Noah Berkson of Cash Rent, and Cash Rent is a new service for uh, renting farmland. So check that one out as well. Okay. And then uh, are you on, where are you at? You're on Apple? Where, where do you put your podcast out of? Everywhere. Apple, Spotify, Amazon, all of the majors. All the majors. Okay. All right. Well, Deidre, thank you very much for coming on today. If anybody can reach, I will put your information down below. They can reach out to you with any questions. Hopefully they turn into your uh, podcast as well. Thank you for coming on today. And I look forward to staying in touch. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Thank you.